Welcome to Late Night Talks with Amy Jo, a place where you're going to find inspiration, wisdom, and healing. A podcast for men. Hello there. Welcome to Late Night Talks with Amy Jo. I hope that you are well, doing fine, had a great week. I am super excited to be here tonight. <laughs> this is going to be my very first interview ever for Late Night Talks. So I'm really excited for my guest to come on. He's very knowledgeable. He has so much value and shares really great content. So I am going to bring on my guest, Radislav Dichev. He is the Kung Fu Spartan. He has a Bachelor of Science in Kinesiology and Chinese Medicine. He is a fitness trainer, a lifestyle coach. He's won his first Spartan trifecta in 2015. He has studied at the Art of Kung Fu in China for nine months. He has also trained and studied at the Czech Institute, Paul Czech, and he's written an ebook and is in the process of writing another book. Loads of knowledge. And just like I said, he's, he's got some great energy. And I think what we're going to share tonight is going to be valuable just to some of you out there listening. And I hope that you can go check him out. He's on Instagram, uh, TikTok, YouTube. I am going to share all that information in the description of this episode so you can go check him out there. So I am going to just move on forward here and welcome Rad. Thanks again so much for coming on, Rad. It's super great to have you here with us tonight. You are extremely inspiring. So thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me, Amy. I'm really excited to share my knowledge with your audience and teach them a lot about how to be happier and healthier, give some good tips, um, get to know my story a little bit better. So I'm very excited to be here. Awesome. Glad to hear it. So one of the things that was very inspiring to me when I came across your page was your decision to going to Kung Fu school. I know at that age, a lot of guys out there are partying and <laughs> chasing girls, looking to get laid, and your decision to go move across the country to Kung Fu school. Why did you make that decision? Why did you choose Kung Fu school? Um, there was a lot of things coming together. So I actually decided to go about three years ahead when I actually went. And at the time, I was kind of deciding whether I should finish my kinesiology degree or not, or if I wanted to travel. And scrolling through YouTube, I came across these Kung Fu schools in China that were teaching foreigners. I thought, wow, that'd be really cool to go to either now or after I finish my school. And by chance, one of my classmates had actually done this and gone and trained with a Shaolin Kung Fu master in China. So I got the details from him, started setting things up, started saving up money, and then after I graduated, everything came together, so I went off. Wow, that's amazing. How did your parents, <laughs> were they supportive? Like, how did they take the news when you said, Mom and Dad, I'm, I'm going to China <laughs> for Kung Fu? Yeah. So that's part of the reason why I took three years to, you know, soften the blow to them. My dad has never been one to tell me no to anything. Like he'd say, do whatever you want, do what you want with your life. That is the only time I've ever heard him say like, don't do this, this is stupid, you're wasting your time, <laughs> this is dangerous. Both my parents were like very adamant, you know, don't go to China, don't go train Kung Fu. After three years went by and gradually softening up, joking yeah. with me. Well, as a parent. It all kind of came together that uh, I went off and then I spent nine months living in China training Kung Fu. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I'm sure it was a little challenging for them as a parent. I can understand <laughs> their uh, hesitation in wanting to let you do that. But so when you went there, how did you get this from 
being, you know, from, from the rest of the world, you, you left friends, you left family, and then you're in this space where it's bare bones. How did you adjust from the separation being? Uh, so at the time I left, I was basically doing school, working for myself, working for a gym. I was studying real estate and becoming a real estate agent, working for my parents, just spread out all over the place. So I was really welcoming, you know, going to the mountains and just focusing on myself. No emails, no phone calls, no clients, just wake up, train eight hours a day. And the situation there was quite different from, you know, the comforts of North America and what I'd gone through in the sense that I arrived in November, December, and it started to get really cold at that time. And we're training eight hours a day, Monday to Friday. It's getting to like minus 30, crazy snow, and there's no insulation in China. Bare minimum heating, and you're basically wearing all your clothes. Wow. Yeah. So it was wow. Quite the, and you're living in a mountain, so it's not like you can go anywhere. <laughs> You want to go anywhere, you got to go yeah. to taxi and it's like 20 minutes to go anywhere. So you're literally, you're living with a roommate, you open the door, you're in the dojo and you're training right away. Kitchen, shower, with a tiny little water heater. And man, when it's <laughs> minus 30 outside and there's no water left in the water heater because everyone showers at the same time. Oh. You're like, you're minus 30, putting on the shower with ice cold water. <laughs> like, oh, oh, okay close up and then <laughs> rush to the kitchen to eat because wow. there's not a whole lot of food either. It's like rice, potatoes, a little bit of veg and some chicken. And then there's next day, next day, next day. It's very grueling. So that's, that's what your days really were filled with just training. What was, you, just explain a little bit of how, like what was your day to day? What did that look like? Yeah. Um, so you'd wake up around 5.30, eat a little bit if you wanted, and then training at 6 o'clock. You do an hour of Tai Chi and Qigong, so you're meditating, doing slow movements. Then you have a little bit of time for breakfast, which is usually like oatmeal and a few eggs. Then it's three hours of Kung Fu form training. So like just the same thing over and over and over for three hours. You have wow. lunch. There's a chef there that prepares lunch and dinner. I like chef. It's like very basic stuff. <laughs> Yeah, you have an hour and a half, you do another three hours of Kung Fu. So like kickboxing, sometimes it's sparring against each other. Mm. Dinner, one more hour of Qigong Tai Chi, and then you're basically ready for bed at that point. Yeah, so very, like, I'm sure. Time in between, but it's just physical, physical, physical. And uh, yeah, during that time, actually, I did a lot of mental work too. So in my breaks, I would study different languages. I started my YouTube channel five years ago. So if you go back and look at my old videos, a lot of it's just from China. It looks actually yeah. horrible. It's just me standing in front of the camera, nervous, but <laughs> that's actually where I started my whole online content creation journey too. Yeah, I saw the clip of, of when you were out in, in China and it looks like basically a warehouse that you were staying in a little bit. It's it's quite, it's quite desolate, it seems, you know, but, um, so how would you handle the days where you just felt like, I want to give up, like, or did, didn't, was there a time where it came across where you were like, what the hell was I thinking coming here? Like, <laughs> why did I make this decision? <laughs> well, yeah, so part of it, I'm from Bulgaria. And in Bulgaria, like, okay. it's part of the, I don't know if it still is anymore, but like when you turn 18, you go to the army for a few years and it's like standard, everyone does it. And the army yes. at that point is just like, you're taking shit the whole time, doing things you don't want to do in situations that are uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was partially that, like I knew going in that this is going to be hard and I'm going to want to quit and I just can't quit because that's the whole point of it is to not quit. Right. And yeah, like after a month, I was shit what the fuck am i doing here this is <laughs> you're doing the same thing over and over and over and over eating the same shitty food over and over and over and you know you get down this negative spiral there was there was a point where i kind of like broke down went outside and just started crying 
had a good cry and I was like, oh, oh. man, I needed that emotional release. Went back and yes. kept going. But what I really took away from it is um, I, I tend to find myself, like I would describe myself as a positive person, generally happy mm -hmm. and like, good mindset. Yes. And when you're training eight hours a day all the time and the bed we're sleeping on is like this much comforter, it's basically sleeping on wood. And I'm a very wow. bony dude. Wow. Like sleeping on wood pretty much. It's very uncomfortable sleep, uncomfortable food, uncomfortable training. The entire time your body's beat down. So every time I'm going to training, I'm like, no, nah, I'm tight. I'm feeling weak. Man, this is hurting. This is horrible. Uh, and then I came across this online test that asked, like, you know, are you a positive person? And I went to click yes. And I'm like, wait a minute. All my talking <laughs> has been negative. I've just been negative talking to myself the entire time. So then I made the commitment to switch. Anytime I catch myself, like, I'm not flexible. I would catch that negative thought and just like five times repeat, I'm flexible, I'm flexible, I'm flexible, I'm flexible. I'm feeling tired. I have energy, I have energy, I have energy. So I just flip it. Right. As soon as I flip it, like you can immediately feel the body transform and change. It's not, it's like night and day difference versus telling myself I feel weak, telling myself I feel strong. So I really learned that mind psychology connection during that whole experience. Wow. Yeah. I think it definitely helps when you change that thought, even with the little things that I do from time to time with exercise, you know, you're struggling and it's like, not you're strong, you're strong. And it's amazing, you know, how, how you come through and it's like, hell, I did it. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, so when did you first become passionate about your, your chosen field? Or when was the moment that you decided that you wanted to do what you wanted to do? Yeah, I guess there's a few different factors coming together. I, okay. If seen me in high school and even in college, you would have been like, this guy's going to be a lifestyle coach, personal trainer? <laughs> <laughs> this guy? No. Um, yeah, so I was training judo, and one of my friends there gave me this book called Convict Conditioning. And it was oh. just about body weight training. Mm -hmm. So like how people in prison do push-ups, pull-ups, whatever, to get jacked and strong. And it's written so well and motivating that, you know, I was like, all right, I want to get into this. I'm training judo. It's going to help. And I started watching videos of people on YouTube doing crazy handstands, bar workouts, just jacked. So I started training into that. And I got really interested. And at the time, I was studying criminal justice in university. Oh. I couldn't wow. tell you why it was. <laughs> Funny okay. story, actually. I ran into this girl from my high school, and she said she was studying kinesiology at the school. And okay. I was like, why would someone study kinesiology? <laughs> what a stupid thing to study. <laughs> a year later, I'm, yeah, I'm talking to my cousin who's in kinesiology, and he's like, dude, you know a lot. You've been reading these books. Just go study kinesiology. I was like, all right, kinesiology. Oh, my goodness. That is funny. <laughs> yeah, so I ended up going through this four-year process. And somewhere along the journey, I find out this guy named Paul Check through the Czech Institute. Okay. And I happen to have a seminar in Vancouver. It's a few months away, Holistic Lifestyle Coach Level 1. No idea what it is. I just sign up. I really liked the guy speaking. I heard him on a podcast. Let's go. And it was just a weekend course on the basics of lifestyle. And after I finished it, like, my mind was so blown away that they don't teach us in kinesiology, in high school, in elementary school. Like, the amount of information that is just so practical and useful for everyone. Mm. What's important to understand is it's like level one is about yourself. You're not supposed to go out and coach people after it. It's like, can you embody the things that are basic in health right now? And then you go take level two. It's like, yeah, here's how you can help other people do it too. But the wow. embodiment is just so important to me. So after I took that, I basically had the conversation with myself, my parents, like, yo, I want to do lifestyle coaching. This seems to be really important, life impacting information, and I want to share it. And eight years or whatever odd later, and here I am. Still here you are here. doing what you're doing. That's awesome. That's really great. So, what's one thing that you wish you had known when you began this field? Um. 
Yeah, I think so. When I first joined the field, I thought all personal trainers knew the exact same information and could get the same results. But hmm. as I've come to find out, that is not true. There's a million ways to slice a cucumber to get to that health goal, and it's it's more than just the training protocols. It's it's the personality, the connection. Yes, the theory, but the practical experience and seeing it. Like it's one thing reading, you know, eight to twelve reps, three sets in a book, but then seeing it, living it, experiencing it yourself and being able to share that. Um, yeah, I guess I just I wish I knew more that it was about the individual and your drive rather than everyone's the same commodity in the personal training field. Yeah, I can understand that as well. Absolutely. So what are some of the best resources that have helped you along the journey or who? Yeah, three really good resources come to mind. Paul Check, the Check Institute. If you're not going to be a trainer or a holistic coach, it still pays to go through his education just for yourself to learn. This is the basics <laughs> like drinking water, eating clean food, moving, breathing, thinking. The stuff that, I've never heard of him. I'm sorry. Okay, so, yeah, so Paul checks, um, I think he's 60 now. He's been in the field for like 35 years. He's revolutionized mm. a lot of stuff. He's brought in a lot of things that you see common in the gym, but just weren't popular back then. He um, popularized primal movement patterns. So like push, pull, lunge, squat, deadlift, hinge, and jogging wow. and running. So like he really brought a lot of that to mainstream, Swiss ball training, cable training. Um, a lot of my training stuff comes from him along with um, stuff, stuff. So anyways, he's 60, he's jacked. He totally looks like someone who's healthy. <laughs> yeah. But he's also extremely smart, like well yes. studied. He's extremely emotionally stable, spiritually stable. He, you know, he meditates, he zens out. He, he does both paths. He's not just physical and strong, but he's also emotionally, spiritually, and mentally strong as well. So I really enjoy that about him. Mm -hmm. That's what I strive is like to have as much of the package as possible versus just one angle. One thing. Yes, as a whole, for sure. Mm -hmm. I am on board with that. So is there any, any other resources? Um, yeah, um, I would recommend Joel Seedman. I think his thing is advanced human performance. For anyone just looking for really good lifting and training mm -hmm. protocols and examples of good movement, just Joel Seedman and then Carolyn Mice. She's yeah. A lot of really good books for emotional, mental, spiritual connection. Um, yeah, those are my main go tos. Yeah, it's interesting. I've never heard of any any of them actually. So I'll definitely have to check them out for sure. Right. What is the biggest challenge that you're facing right now or a challenge that you've been facing over the years, I suppose. Uh, I mean, right now I just graduated Chinese medicine school. So I'm kind of in that transition period of, do I go into practice? Do I travel? Do I keep making online content? Like where am I supposed to be right now in this moment? Uh, but outside of that, the biggest challenge what I have to say doesn't matter. So as a child, like anytime I tried to share my thoughts and opinions and tried to help adults, I always felt very shut down. Like they didn't care what I had to say. My input didn't matter. And so now there's always mm -hmm. that feeling that I have to fight. Like, no, your information matters. People want to hear, you have good things to say. But I have to give that self mental talk constantly. So I've always struggled with that. That's always, um, yeah, a challenge. I think that reconditioning is something that a lot of people struggle with, you know, over a certain amount of years of your life and you're so conditioned to be a certain way and, and what you've learned as a child, it's very hard to break free from that, but it's it takes work and, and consistency. So yes, I totally, I, I have the same struggles, so I completely understand. I think a lot of people do. Um, who are three people who have been the most influential to you? 
I'll go again with Paul Check. People got to go check him out. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm assuming you've heard of Tim Ferriss, probably. I have. I have. Yeah. So there was a point where I just started reading a lot of books in my 20s and reading the four hour work week was one of those important books, the four hour body. Just listening to the way he talks and breaks things down into like an A, B, C, here's the practical. Mm. I find my style is very much so like that too, where it's, I try not to be so esoteric and like out there. Yeah. Like <laughs> step you can take. Yes. You know, from a to Z, but here's the A, B, C's and kind of just putting it all together for people. So Tim, Tim definitely inspires. And then Joe Rogan is huge. Yes. I've been listening to him for several years and just the breadth of people he brings onto his show and the new mm -hmm. ideas he brings and how open he is about things. He's definitely changed my mind on a lot of uh, subjects. So definitely those three people are a big influence for me. Yeah, I, I know. I listen to Joe Rogan a lot too. <laughs> yeah. And Tim Ferriss as well. So what advice would you give someone who is on the same path that you are, that, that are starting from where you were? Um, you're on the same path. You know, you got to read a lot and then you got to stop reading and you got to start doing. You got to expect that you're going to fail. <laughs> like the amount of times I've failed at doing something online or videos or content is it greatly outnumbers the amount of success I've had, if I've had any success online. So just like realize you got to start doing, you can't just, you know, have that analysis paralysis by analysis where you're overthinking. You just got to take small steps, take small actions and actually so start true. to build versus just read and make plans and in the future when, <laughs> then I'll do this. It's like, nah, you got to do something right now. Let's make a plan, make a goal and then do something. And I yes, also highly yes. recommend like pick specific books that you like and reread them, go through them again, because like there's a lot of garbage out there and there's not enough time for you to read all of it. So pick like mm. the best resources that you can find old philosophers, you know, wise men from the past. Doesn't have to be a book written right now yes. to be valuable and limit yourself because there's too much. You gotta just start doing. And I guess last thing is um, you gotta believe in yourself. Like you really, there's that term fake it till you make it, which I never mm -hmm. really liked. Me either. It's more like you just gotta build yourself till you are. You don't necessarily have to fake it. It's like, right. You build yourself. And a lot of it, you know, we talk about confidence and self esteem. Here's the secret. Like this is the one sentence that I found for confidence that just makes the most sense to me and how to build it is make commitments to yourself and then stick mm -hmm. to them. Yes. That's how you get confidence. If I have, if I'm in a relationship with someone in any capacity and they tell me they're going to do something and they do it, I have yes. confidence. They've done it over and over. They tell me they don't do it, but they tell me they're going to do it and they don't do it. I've lost confidence. It's the same yes. thing for yourself. Yes. If you keep making promises that you don't keep, you're not going to have self-confidence. Make exactly. stuff that moves you towards confidence. Yeah, that's really a great reminder, really great advice because yes, I totally am. I agree with that too. I've shared that in the past too, to really, it is about commitment to yourself before you can commit to anything, you know, to any anyone else, you have to commit to yourself for sure. So what motivates you to get out of bed and, and do what you do on a, on a daily, you know? What, what motivates you to just, get up and jump right out of bed. <laughs> you are leaping out of bed, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, you know, big audacious goals. I always ask myself, clients, friends, people I'm with, like, what's the meaning of life? What's the meaning of your life? What's the purpose? Because without that clear purpose, like, why are you getting out of bed? So mm. for me right now, I'm saying my brothers, I just finished school. I'm not really committed anywhere. I don't have to be anywhere. So what gets me out of bed? It's just that thought of like, oh, I got, I got a book I'm writing. If I don't get out of bed, mm -hmm. that book ain't getting written. 
And it's a struggle for me too. If there's no external schedules, like I got to meet John here and then I got a class at one o'clock and got to call my mother at four. When you don't have that and your schedule is just completely open space and you don't slot stuff in for yourself. Like when I was a kid, even in like my twenties, I was addicted to video games, like heavily. I'd be playing 10, 12 hours a day, Xbox just by myself, staring at a screen, especially wow. in the summer when I had no commitments, it was just open space. That's where my body and mind tend to go to is just play video games. Mm. So a lot of it is just waking up and going, ah. the Stoics have this concept of like meditating on death, where mm. if you think, okay, today's could be my last day, I should make it worthwhile, not wasted playing 10 hours of video games. So for me, it's like, if I don't get this book done, if I don't produce more content, if I don't get myself out there talking to people and helping change their lives and kind of wasting my potential, I don't want to end up being a hundred years old. It's like, oh, I had that book that I written halfway. You know, I had this Instagram, TikTok, whatever that I never really saw all the way through. You got to have those big goals that are driving you to become who you want to become. And that's what's going to get you out of bed. It's like, what's the purpose? If your purpose is to like wake up in the morning, scrape a living together and just pay off your rent, that's not very exciting. You're not going to jump out of bed. Mm -hmm. If your purpose is to like help a million people, help out your community, yes, learn a new language. And that's like at the forefront of your brain, that getting up means I get to engage with this goal and progress to it. Then you're going to progress to it. If you don't, if you're right. not like constantly reminding yourself of the goals and the why, you're not going to jump out of bed very excited. Yes, it really makes a difference. Can we touch on on that? You had mentioned your addiction to gaming. How did you break free of that? How did you finally say enough is enough? I can't do this anymore. Because it's, I mean, I think a lot of people when you have any kind of addiction and you kind of break free from it, it is, it's hard. Sometimes you get pulled back in, like you were saying, like on your open days, you know, it's like, Oh, you know, I could go do that. But in that moment, when you were dealing with that every single day and you're sitting there 12 hours are passing by, when was the moment where you said, okay, I can't, I can't do this anymore. Oh gosh. Um, or what caused you to want to just stop? Yeah, I'm trying to reflect like if there was a specific moment, like it's not oh. like I hit rock bottom, my girlfriend left me, I had no money, no. I had no yeah. shit to do with <laughs> I started reading and educating myself. Like I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I was, I'd say that's like one of the first, probably the first book I read on my own without someone telling me to. Yeah, so good. It changed my brain like, oh, wow. This, this is a different option. I don't have to work nine to five and then just play video games the rest of the time. Like, there's motivation in other people's words and their guidance to life that I never got as a child or through media, through my parents. And this was like 2013, 2014. I went to Australia. I'm thinking what broke the cycle. So I went to Australia and I didn't have any video games. Like I didn't have a TV. Or uh -oh. <laughs> like four months of barely any access to it i remember i got access like near the end it's like oh god i can play like let's play let's go <laughs> <laughs> maybe that was it and then i came back and it's it's the realization of like oh wow this is a lot of wasted time and nothing good's coming of it so i got rid of my xbox but like I i've never really i don't think i've had quite an addiction like this like i've never smoked or drank alcohol been drunk so I don't have those traditional wow. other spaces, but like for video games, when it's open space, you know, sometimes I do download a game on my iPad, play it for a few right. hours and then close. It's like, well, that was a waste, but I find motivation <laughs> in that. Like, I, have the, I, I get that same feeling too, where it's like, what's the meaning? There's no point. I'm just going to sit here and play video games. Nothing's going to make me happy. Right, and right. Like, as I go deeper and deeper into that feeling, there's a switch that happens where it's like, no, there's a point. Look at all these goals you got written. Let's yes. Go yeah. It's like it rebounds me into motivation to, mm -hmm. to go down, suffer, have a little bit of negative anxiety and grief about what I'm doing. And then it's like, oh, it's just like it resets, it relaunches. It's like, it's like a rest. Yes. 
Yeah, I mean, it's. I think it's the same with when we get, you know, attached to our phones. It doesn't have to be a video game. You're, we're scrolling through hours and hours of media, and it's like now I stop myself after five minutes, and I, I say to myself, like, this is wasting <laughs> time where I could be, you know, learning something or growing my business or doing this or doing that. And I immediately put the phone down now because I have wasted a lot of time by doing that, like looking at other people out there doing their thing. And it's like, you know, like, why, why am I not doing this? <laughs> like, this is a wasting time. So yes it's so if i can make a recommendation i've done this a few times where you just take a day or two a weekend and you don't do anything like you just watch paint dry this helps to reset your dopamine threshold so when i say don't do anything i mean like no music no reading no meditating it's just like just sit there and do nothing and this just helps reset your dopamine threshold so wow reading a book becomes exciting again it, it's like it's like it's like eating a bag of chips like the salt eventually desensitizes and you need yes. more chips to hit that and more chips and more chips so it's the dopamine you just more and more and more you take it away you resensitize then when you come back you come back with some consciousness and effort to reduce mm. no that's that's great advice too i i actually have tried that but i've only done it for like probably two hours to do it for a full weekend or a few days it time. would definitely be challenging it would be very very challenging you know i i love music is what gets me by i mean i don't do tv or anything like that but I, to have some kind of a sound around but when i have done that and i have sat in a room where there's absolutely nothing i will say that a lot of things came through ideas and thoughts and you know so it's a great it's a great space to grow in i mean solitude and really having nothing is a great space to be in for sure for for growth i think so but as far as the dopamine i've never really thought about it like that that's a really great point yeah for you and your audience on my youtube channel radislav detchev i have some dopamine videos and details okay a little bit more but, uh... cool Definitely I'll have to go check good. them out. <laughs> um, so what gets you into the right mindset and to stay consistent? Like, what do you do to lock yourself into the mindset? Because I think that's another struggle for a lot of people is, you know, you, you might start the day and say, oh, I'm going to do this. And then, you know, an hour later, it gets thrown out the window. How do you stay consistent with that? Do you have any kind of well tips <laughs> and no one responsible to me <laughs> or that yeah. i'm responsible for so it helps a lot obviously yes. people are in that situation um like waking up consistently and having a bit of a morning routine is huge so for me in writing this book if i just sit down and try and write it's hard to get the flow and the state and going and the moon and the sun to line up exactly so what it is for me is just waking up, getting myself out of bed and starting to walk. Like once I'm outside walking, I'll listen to a little motivation track, some Jim Rohn mm -hmm. or Brian Tracy. And it gets me like jived up to, to go. It, it's brainwashing me to be like, you got goals, you want to do them. It's going to make you feel good. Do a little movement, some breathing, some Qigong. Just have those things you know that <sighs> the problem is most people tend to associate the things that they should do for themselves as like a negative thing. So like, oh, I should go out and walk for 30 minutes. I should do a few push-ups. I should do a few squats. It's like they associate it negatively because it's taking away and it's like a discipline and they have to do it. Yes. Versus you, you do the action and then really pay attention to how your body feels after. Like, oh, I actually feel better. My mood's elevated. I have more energy. I'm more creative. I'm I'm happier to sit in front of this computer and do my writing. So then you make that connection. Like, okay, every time I go for a walk, do some breathing and some Qigong, everything else flows better after. So start mm. discovering for yourself, like, what are the few things you need to fall into place to make the day go well? And it's very rare that a good, a bad morning will turn into a good day. So like that first yes. morning of getting out and 
doing that one or two really important things you need to do to set yourself. Yes. Right That's how you stay consistent and in the right mindset. Otherwise, so you're going to be playing video games all day. That's true. <laughs> I think it's also important that we need to go to bed in the right state of mind as well, you know, in order to wake up in, in a good state. If you're listening to garbage or you're in a crappy, angry, terrible mood before you go to bed, that's, that's probably what you're going to wake up feeling like as well. So it's important to process through that before going to sleep so that you can wake up and say, I am ready to take on the day. <laughs> yes. Um, um, yeah. No, go ahead. Um, there's this book called The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod, I believe. Okay. And then he just talks about like all the morning routine stuff people need. And there was something really critical. What you're saying is if you're going to bed thinking like, oh, it's 2 a.m., I'm going to wake up at 6 a.m., have zero energy, it's going to be a bad night's sleep, like you're going to manifest that reality versus if yes. you go to bed and I'm going to sleep well and I'm going to wake up with energy and get started on my day. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you get out your running clothes and your notepad and whatever you have, like exactly to your point. A good morning starts in the evening. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah, I've never heard of that book either. You got some good ones for us today, Rad. <laughs> If you if if you could give your sixteen year old self advice, what would you say? Um, adults are just children in big bodies. Yes. No one, <laughs> no one has it figured out, so don't let some a child in an adult body tell you what you can and can't do, and what is and what isn't possible. Mm. it's super important and you can see it in our society like maybe your parents or grandparents or friends parents or your own relationship where people have the emotional and communication skills of a five-year-old they scream they hit they yell amen yeah they don't listen like no one's taught them these skills of proper communication so like the nonviolent communication guide mm. and um yeah, just emotional control. So it's something like a book like Feelings Buried Alive Never Die or Carolyn Mice. Like yes. going into your own and like reading and learning, oh, so this is how I can control. Like especially as a guy growing up 10 years plus of martial arts experience, male-dominated society where they're like, don't show emotion, don't cry, suck it up. I never really understood like what emotions are feelings they had no value to me it's just intellect and logic you say this this i don't mm. care how your feelings are that we said this and this and a lot of men and women just you get that feeling in your chest in your stomach in your throat in your yes. legs that you don't know what it is you don't know how to handle it. it's like stresses you out and it's kind of like an animal's attacking you mm -hmm. and you're attacking back yes so being able to sit into this feeling of okay, I'm kind of being disrupted by my environment, what that person just said, let me calm down. Yes. What does this mean? How am I feeling? And like understanding that in order to communicate back to the person, look what you said, it hurts me because of this and blah, blah, blah. Can we have a calm, like, calm conversation over it versus reacting? Can you tell you mean things? Yes. Can you tell me mean things? <laughs> I don't feel good about it. Like, you gotta treat people like children sometimes. How are you mm -hmm. feeling? What yes. I said, this makes sense. This is why I did this. And I'm seeing it's somehow bothering you. Is there a way to I make agree. it better in the future? So my advice is just people don't have the answer. Most of the time they don't know. And they're just like children. So treat yourself like a child. You got to educate yourself. Yes. Yeah, I think that that's, you know, partly what I teach too is, is well, not partly, it's, it's huge, is to really get to know yourself. The more we get to know ourselves, the more we can understand other people. And that, that communication does help. It's more of a, a conscious relationship where you're both understanding each other. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I agree with you on that one. What's the most important thing that you've learned in your life? And what was your life like? before learning it and what has your life been like since you've learned it, like now? Um, <laughs> you need to suffer to be happy. Right? Mm. 
self-imposed chosen suffering will lead to results which leads to happiness. So if we take my example, like when I just played video games, there wasn't really any suffering. It was just happiness, happiness, happiness to the de degeneration of my body. Like I was eating pizza, donuts, Subway, McDonald's, cereal, oh. just crap food all the time. Not going to bed till like one or 2 AM staring at a screen all day, not socializing, not working out. There was no self-imposed suffering. It was just joy, dopamine, dopamine, dopamine all the time. Versus now it's like, I go to the gym. I'm scared to go to the, like, I'm looking forward to it. It's part of my routine. My body needs it, but I'm just like, fuck. I'm, so <laughs> I'm doing these ridiculous workouts right now that are doing like 500 to a thousand reps that are, it's just great. Wow. Sitting on the machine or the bicep curl or whatever. And okay, I got to feel this and do like another 50 and you get to 50. It's like, okay, I'm only halfway done on these reps of the first set. Yesterday I did legs and the first exercise <laughs> was leg extensions. Yes. Reps, and then you do 60 reps and then you do 70 reps and then 80 oh, reps. Wow. Reps total. Oh man, someone's calling the phone. Um, 450 reps total. Sorry. It's like it's okay. All right, they picked up. Um You're good. Yeah, so you're like 450 reps. My first exercise took me 30 minutes for the first exercise of the whole workout. And even then it's like, like, why am I doing this? This is brutal. I don't need to be here. I can go yeah. home. <laughs> like, that's my brain thinking. And then I'm like, as soon as I hear that voice, yes. the voice turns on. Like, I love it. I love this. I love suffering. I want to be here. I want these legs to grow. I want to be better. It's you got to replace that. And a lot of people's yeah. mindset is, this sucks. I'm sweating. I'm hurting. Uh, I'm out of breath. Why am I here? This isn't going to work. I'm out. And they let that mind mentality take over instead of letting, you know, the understanding that it's going to be difficult and it should be difficult and I need to suffer through this. And in suffering through this, I'm going to get what I want. Like I have clients that tell me, hey, is this going to feel easier one day? Am I, am I going to feel better? I'm like, well, it, you just get better. You just lift more weights. It's still, it never gets easy. Yeah. Like if you're benching 50 pounds and now you're benching 250, like, yeah, 50 is easy, but it's not going to do anything for you. 250 is what's going to do something for you. Yeah. So unless you're constantly being challenged and it's suffering and hard, you're not going to grow and you're not going to benefit from it. Like comfort zone. Well, you taught me that, you know, I'm, I'm, like I've talked to you about, I really struggle with routine and staying with my fitness and my health. And that's, you know, I mean, I eat healthy, but it's actually staying on a routine. And, you know, the small wins that you say, just start small and then build up each each couple of days, get more and more and more. So I'm not out here you know, doing, doing 100 push-ups or anything like that, but... You know, I say to myself, okay, this is, this is what, this is what I need to do. Like you said, it's, it's building that up to, you know, to get the result and to suffer through it, but to keep the positive mindset going and saying like, I, I'm strong, I can do this. My body is, you know, super strong and healthy. And, you know, I'm good with the, the self-talk throughout day to day, you know, my cells are healthy, you know but it's, it's the workout routines. It's just sticking with it. That's been one of my challenges. Everything else I seem to be okay on, but dang, but you've been helping me tremendously. I mean, seriously, it's, it's been helpful. So. Yeah, I'm really happy to hear that. And it's, yes. it's not like, um, like I'm saying this now, but this is like eight, nine years into my journey. It right. Takes time. Like I've added, I've added things and then taken them away, added things. Yes. That's, that's life. There's an undulation as to what's happening, but you're either like upwardly trending or downwardly trending. Mm -hmm. and like I might have some downs in my life, but it's all like in the sake of coming up and up into it. And yeah, I'm speaking of these 500,000 rep workouts. You don't need to do that. <laughs> this is, no. You know, I'm just, yeah, I'm no. For some reason, I'm not going to do this forever. This is right. You, know, you don't need that to get the results. You just need, hard work, dedication, and make sure it challenges you. 20 reps can challenge you. You've never done 10. Yes. 10 exactly. reps is challenging. Exactly. 
Yeah, no. And I mean, you know, you've done a lot of this. Sorry, you've done a lot of the strength training, you know, like you're out there doing these, <laughs> the, the, the stand up, you know, and, and it's just your strength is, it's crazy what you can do with your body. That's what was inspiring. I'm like, I want to do a handstand like that. <laughs> I'm like, this guy is going to teach me how to do this. <laughs> and it's just, yeah, like just watching, because I know you've recorded yourself doing a lot of the, the exercises. That's It's really important for people to check you out over there on YouTube and even on Instagram on what you do. Like you're pulling yourself up with one arm and you know, over time, it, it showed you could see the difference between from when you started to to where you are. So, and you know, like even in you saying that, in my mind, I just still think I'm weak and not strong. really. Yeah. <laughs> I think no matter how long you lift and how strong you get, there's always like, yeah, I can do that, but I can't do this. And like once I get there, like handstands, like once I get a thirty second handstand, like that's enough. Great. But then you get it, it's like, just oh, no, I need to do a handstand. Do more. Just a handstand, and a one arm chin up. And it's always another one. So it's it's a hard balance between being happy with what you have and where you're yes. at. Yes. But also wanting to become better. So it's, but, but I mean, when is the, when's the point where you say, okay, like I'm content with this, you know, is there a root? Is there a reason? Like what, what is the, the whole, like, I need to be more, I need to do more, you know, since. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, so I use this, I segment things into four blocks, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. Mm -hmm. I notice, like, you know, I'll go really intense on the physical, the other three will suffer a bit. I'll go really intense on the mental, the other ones will suffer. I'll go more intense on the spiritual, more intense on the emotional. Like, yeah, there's a, a, a balance of where more of the energy goes at a given time. So let's say right now I'm really interested in the physical and pushing it. And then mm -hmm. there'll be a point where it's like, oh, I'm really interested in studying French or breathing yes. for an hour. So now I don't have time for the physical. It doesn't be as, much, as important. And so in that sense, like, okay, it's enough. I, I'm content and I'm more excited to do something else. I'll do it. And then there's the routine aspect where it's like, well, now you're dropping the routine and replacing something else. And it's just experience and knowing yes. yourself. Like, how do I handle change? How do I need to change this instability to stability? It's just going inwards and like, this is, I was successful when I was doing this. I'm not successful when I'm doing this. I'm yes. Or nothing I'm doing is successful. Let's just take someone else's word for it and do as much as I can. Yeah, I think that, yeah, balance is really important to, to, to pay attention to that as well so that there's other areas in life that, you know, aren't suffering as much. But so what, what is, would be your tip? for helping the world be a better place. <laughs> uh, this is just an interesting question. I just like to, to hear people's input on this. Call your local governmental representative. <laughs> make them do the changes. No. Uh, and right. it always starts with yourself and taking responsibility. Like the word responsibility is response, ability. Anything that happens in your life you mm -hmm. have the ability to respond to it in whatever way you want. So my thing for making the world a better place is start with yourself and lead by example. There's a lot of leaders and people out there that are telling you, like, do push-ups, eat better food, don't pollute the environment, mm -hmm. don't have sex before you're married. And they're committing all the sins while telling you to your face, like, don't do this. Yes. And there's an energy transfer in that. Like, whether you know it or not, you know that person's lying to you. Like their body looks unhealthy. They don't look healthy. That they're unhappy. Yes. There's an energy imbalance where it, when you know, when you're like in touch with your feelings and you can recognize it's like, oh, okay, he said this, but like that's not how he's actually feeling or what they're actually thinking and how they're engaging with life. So for me, it's just super important. And Paul Check gave us this lesson at uh, Level 2 Lifestyle Coach where he literally opened it with saying, I get so many people from here coming to me and telling me my stuff doesn't work. And then I look at them and they're like, are you doing the things that I'm telling you to do? Or are you just telling your clients to do the things and you're not doing mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. 
and that's why I like Paul Check because he's a real dude. He's not, he's not bullshitting people. It's like, yeah, he's doing it, and you can tell he's sixty years old, Jack, strong as hell, sharp, smart, very successful. It's very obvious that what he's doing works, and that's why I want to represent myself, like having a good physique, having good mentality, emotional control, spiritual control, so that I can be well rounded and serve people. Yes. Because, like, you don't want to go to a personal trainer who's fat. You don't want to go to a mechanic no. or a dentist whose teeth are knocked out. <laughs> well, it's true. I mean, I've been to a gym where I walked in and they're like, this is your trainer. And I'm not judging or anything, but he was totally overweight and totally unfit. And I said to myself, like, what is this guy going to do for me if he's not doing it himself, you know? And, and me me doing what I do here, sharing, you know, I do, I expose my failures sometimes in, in certain areas and, you know, it's all part of growing and stuff, but absolutely. I feel, I feel what you're saying is important, you know, to be a personal trainer. Yes. Look the part because you're doing it, you know? Yeah. And then if you're taking someone's money, like that's the thing too, is like, I would charge money and anytime I get into like an unhealthy habit or stop working out and I have to go see my clients and train them, it's like, oh God, I feel like a piece of shit for taking yeah. money. Like, yeah. That also motivates me. There's, the thing people need to understand is th this is the secret to success. Like the more reasons you have to succeed in whatever your goal is, the more likely you're going to succeed. It's like one day that motivation is not going to be enough. So you're going to need to fall back on the other 10 reasons you have to succeed. So let's say being healthy, let's say losing 50 pounds. It's gonna, you know, maybe help you fight diabetes or cancer, or heart disease. It's gonna help you play with your children for a longer amount of time. It's gonna help you mm -hmm. make more money because you're more cognitive at work and you're more energetic to do whatever you need to do. You can have a better relationship with your husband because, you know, versus just lose 50 pounds to one reason. Like more reasons right. health, and the more written and clear they are, on the day that this reason doesn't work and get you out of bed, another one might. So that's very important. Yeah, I think that that is really important. I remember you had shared that with me the other day that we talked. So I thought that was really helpful. So this was a great talk. Where can our listeners find you? <laughs> We're all over the place, baby. Um, Instagram is the best place. So yes. My, my tag is rad, radislav, rad like radical. So rad, radislav. Um, in there right now, I currently have a free ebook called Vibrant Health. It basically helps you reprogram your mind. I hope everyone goes and downloads it right away. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm working on a new ebook on losing weight through holistic means. So no working out, no counting calories, just good lifestyle planning in order to lose weight. I'm also on TikTok, rad radislav, and I'm on YouTube. Yep, easy to find. Awesome. Thank you so much. I will have all your information in the description of this episode so they can easily find you because I know some of the spelling might be a little wonky with your name, but <laughs> you do have really great content. I highly, highly recommend um all you guys to go out there and check him out and definitely download his ebook because I, I have it myself and it's really informative and great. And we are going to have Rad back on again soon, <laughs> especially when he gets that book done. And yeah, so it was super fun. It was great to have you as my very first guest on Late Night Talks. <laughs> This was a new experience for me, so it was a pleasure to to have it with you. You really have great energy, and I really just appreciate you, you know, impacting so many people the way that you do. I see a lot of people that are touched by just your energy from the what you put out on a daily basis. So thank you for that, because the world needs it. And yeah, just taking the time out to to come on and share your story and your knowledge with the world, with the community here. <laughs> so, yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's mind-blowing being like, 
All right, I'm reaching half a million people this month. Yep. I know you have a lot of you have a lot of followers. A lot of followers. What's that? Nothing. I, I just I'm feeling very blessed, grateful. Thank you to the universe. Thank you to the algorithms Good. that are making this possible. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Great. Well, you're going to you're going to do big things and it'll be exciting to watch. <laughs> we'll <Yeah>. see. <laughs> All right, Rad. Well, thanks guys so much for tuning in tonight and listening. I appreciate all of you and I look forward to coming back soon, sending love and light to all of you. Thank you so much.